This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv, where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports. Welcome to Talk of Asian Marketing, and today we're back to Singapore again for something that actually you can find in many places, including Taiwan, Hong Kong, parts of China. My guest today, Jane Lu from Zhongxin University's Marketing Department. Hi, everybody. I'm here again. Yes, we've done a few shows in Singapore. Yes, we did. This one is a little bit extra interesting for me. I'm Clyde Warden, Zhongxin University in Taiwan, and also from Scotland University of Stirling's Institute of Retail Studies. Now, what we're looking at today, I think, actually feels very comfortable to me. I think so. It is uh, a place uh, that we could go there and spend an afternoon, just uh, kind of looking around and, and don't have to pick up anything, but just feel that um, the shopping environment. Yeah, I think that's a key point, feel that shopping environment. You know, this is what I call, well, first of all, I, I've done a lot of research on this, and I think there's some key points that are important for Chinese retailing. And that is that if you want to succeed really big in this market, some things you need to understand. And one of them I call inside-out retailing. Mm -hmm. That is, you take the inside of the store and you push it out. This is very opposite of what we think of as normal in Western marketing, which is you have to have a big store, very nice inside with space to walk through. Mm -hmm. Actually, the way to get Chinese consumers interested is to push it out on the street, put it into big vats, big containers with special sales signs. Mm -hmm. Let people touch it. Yeah, they put them in different um, um, directions. Uh, very, yeah. it's not organized. Actually, it's on purpose. Uh, it's got organized chaos. Yeah, if it if you put them all up stack tightly together, and then they wouldn't want to touch it. Right, right. It's like something. It's almost a sign saying, "Stay away from me." Yeah. You know, you put it inside of a store, and you put it on a special display, and these people's like they don't want to touch it, but. You know, I think a lot of people have seen this, but they don't realize how important it is. If you go someplace like um, San Francisco, mm -hmm. a Chinatown, yeah. you can see everything's pushed out onto the sidewalk. Now, of course, in some places this may not be legal, right? No, no. And in Singapore, if you go down to the mall areas, which are controlled by big companies like Capital Land, they do control and they don't allow it because they think that's not modern, that's not mm -hmm. Western. But if you want to really get consumers' interest in the Chinese area, Chinese culture, you've got to push it out there. And even a place like Singapore, they do this. Yeah, people like to feel the products. They like to smell it, they like to see it, they like to touch it, they like to play around with it. If they don't have that freedom or they are not allowed to, they are going to step back and then stay away from the products. They make it cold. Right? So it's the difference between being so now hot and noisy or cold. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be involved in that cold. You've got to get it hot and noisy. You've got to get the crowd going. Other people see people push in and then they push in. So we do see this in Singapore, but it's not going to be downtown. It's not going to be in the malls. It's too highly controlled. It's going to be out more in the heartland, in the regular Chinese residential areas. Mm -hmm. And today we're looking at a second-hand market. Yeah, that's very interesting. People have the garage sales in the States, uh, but yes. the garage sales are really just like what Clyde was saying, pushing out of the products, uh, line it up on the street, and then people are just uh, coming in just to look them freely. They could pick up anything they're buying, but they are welcome to do so. And uh, here is the same story, the second-hand market uh, just right on the street. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a lot like those yard markets, those yard sales, you do have a bargaining going yeah. on also, right? There's a lot of research into this. But in the U.S., this is kind of an alternative market. You would never have your mainstream retailers adopt this kind of approach. No. And what I'm saying is in the Chinese market, you really need to adopt this kind of approach. You really need to understand this to get a good grip of what is a core shopping retail value mm -hmm. for consumers. So in this case, it's kind of like a yard sale, but these guys make a business out of it. 
I think so. It's so organized. Uh, you have this uh, tent, you have uh, all these uh, stands, and then people are kind of uh, lining up, and, and then and then the space is enough for people to freely moving around. And then yeah. it's not it temporary. Is. It's there all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be there regularly. And it reminds me a little bit of a Taiwan night market. Cause it's got that so. feeling. Okay, well, let's take a look at the secondhand street and uh, see how exciting and interesting this organized chaos really is. Go ahead. Sungai Road, where the word Sungai means river in Bahasa Melayu, is the largest and the oldest second-hand flea market in Singapore. The market became popular with Malaysians in the 60s to 70s due to its affordable prices. Here, the vendor lined the streets with canvas sheets and goods were displayed along the roadside. Shoppers can find almost anything from vintage items such as cassettes to the latest technology such as laptops and handphones. The flea market today is a place that is off the beaten track for tourists. Visual merchandising can arouse curiosity, draw attention and attract shoppers to the stores. Haptic sense plays a role in consumer behavior. Shoppers feel more confident about the quality of the products after examining it.
歌是真情意，怎样你忍心来放弃？咱这段三年的深厚的感情，请你对我来讲起。OK OK OK， 见见。应该是我的货币来的嘛。对，我的货币来的。那为什么你一定要在这里买？因为观音庙附近都有卖佛牌啊。那边不同哦，那边不可以这样摸了。那边不可以这样。不可以这样看了，你看到那样看啊，那个老板娘就黑了，那脸。可以，如果这里的老板说你不能动呢，你会再买吗？不会。那你会去找别的摊主吗？还是？啊，对的。Hearing can affect people's feelings and behaviors. Fast music with fast tempo increases in house purchase. The man in orange stopped in his track as the music managed to grab his attention.
，很平常的嘛。会不会有人就是锁定要买这个东西，可是跟你杀价之后，你讲可以了，他还是不要买？没有，也是。OK， now we have seen the second hand street. Now, what do you think? You want to go there and then just to take a look around and then kind of touch a little bit and see if you can get some good bargains, or you just want there to see how people、um, buy those、uh, secondhand stuff? It's、um, a bit like a farmers market. You know, you've been to farmers market in yes, the U.S.、Mm -hmm. It's got that feeling. Yeah.、Um, I think a, th these markets can be very big. A lot of different, you know, people selling things in there. So it's not totally unheard of in the U.S., but that's not really mainstream retailing, no. is it? You know, and I think that what we pick up here is some of these core ideas. You can see them in mainstream retailing in Taiwan and Hong Kong,、uh, in southern China, where people push the product out into the walkway. Big vats on sale, special bargains. Let you touch it and dig through it. You know,、um, once I was out shopping with my wife and we went、mm -hmm. to a store. In fact, it was a giant store,、mm -hmm. bicycle store, and they had a lot of the、uh, you know clothes for、mm -hmm. sale, right? And they had them all lined up, and right away my wife starts digging through it, and another <laughs> woman came out, digging, digging, and the, and the saleswoman's all trying to fold them back up and make them nice and neat. And it was a lo lost cause. She should have just let them get all be a mess. It attracts more more people. What did you see in the video, Janet? Really. I I've seen those um, um, people doing the bargaining. Those people trying to、um, take a closer look of the products before they really get into the decision if they want to buy it or not. The woman with the microphone. Yeah. She was testing the KTV、uh, apparatus, and she was bargaining. Yeah. But、um, toward the end, they may not even buy the products, but they still like to try it、uh, once in a while to see if they could get good bargains. If they That's part of the excitement. Yeah. yeah, part of、um, the habit yeah. to yeah. do these kind of things, and then they feel like、uh, it's a relaxing afternoon. They like to go out, and then they've seen something. They don't have to purchase at all. Yeah, right.、There's, you don't have to purchase. And what I like in the video, you could see, like for example, the woman with the KTV、um, machine. She was bargaining, bargaining, and the guy selling it, the retailer there, the manager of that little cube, he. Didn't mind at all. No, no. When she walked away and didn't buy, he's like,、mm, whatever, you know, it's okay.、Yeah. Very friendly. You go there and talk and make friends. You can know the vendors personally. That's one of the things I love about these kinds of street markets. You can get to know the vendors, go up and see them. I really love the idea of having those products all piled up and you can just dig through and touch、mm -hmm. them.、Yeah. I'm so tired of going to stores and. I have to feel guilty. Can I open the box and see no, what it is? No, you can't do that. You know, you're not allowed to open it, right?、No. I, I open them anyway. I'm not going to get kicked out of the <laughs> store someday, right? But I mean, how am I supposed to buy product I don't even see? It? So I love these markets because they're wide open that way.、Mm -hmm. Touch and test and do everything. Yeah, that's the key point. If you can touch it, you can feel it, then you are more willing to spend money on it. Yeah. One point I think that's really good about this video: if I didn't tell you this was in Singapore. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You could, I'd guess, Taiwan, Hong Kong. You can find lots of street markets like this. Also,、uh, China. You can find these places. In fact, this is something a lot of researchers in business over overlook. You know, if you go into places like Beijing, Central Area, or Shanghai, yes, you got all the big department stores. But as soon as you go out to the suburbs, they're dominated by retailing, just、mm -hmm. like this. These little shops with the with the owner selling their goods right there. They let you touch. They let you talk. They let you bargain. That's everywhere. Yeah, you can buy almost the anything, everything you want,、so. <laughs> including used KTV. Yes, for amplifiers, sure. Amplifiers, right? All right. Okay, so if you get over to Singapore,、um, don't buy the expensive stuff. Go get secondhand. Go ahead, try it.、Uh, you're going to have fun. Yeah, you have some fun. All right, see you later. See ya. This is talk of Asian marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Our website is ccc.qbook.tv. Where you can find other audio and video episodes with photos, links, and information related to today's conversation. Subscribe to leave comments and access research episodes with applied topics and research reports.